once again with colour and life, Mozambique is today considered to be Africa's success story. With its crippling civil war that spanned three decades and claimed nearly one million lives, now consigned to the history books, the country is held up as a model of what aid, debt relief and good governance can achieve. Tourism companies describe Mozambique as a hidden paradise with its pristine beaches and warm hospitality. The capital, Maputo, is today one of Africa's most vibrant cities, complete with internet cafes and high-rise buildings. Busy street markets and growing industry are testament to what the World Bank has described as the country's blistering pace of economic growth. But if we scratch this surface of relative peace and stability, we find blisters of a far more threatening kind. The open wounds of a country once considered amongst the most ravaged, uninhabitable places on earth. By the end of the civil war in 1992, Mozambique was one of the world's most heavily landmined countries. Over the years, the issue has fallen off the international agenda, but thousands of landmine victims still face a daily struggle for survival. They are the forgotten legacy of Mozambique's dark past. In March 2007, the world was reminded of Mozambique's landmines when an explosion in an arms depot sent ordnance flying across a densely populated neighborhood in Maputo. Celso Hilario was only seven years old when he lost his leg and two family members to the blast. Daí isso começou a explodir quando o professor disse vão para casa, eu fui para casa, quando cheguei lá, ficamos um, uns minutinhos, a minha tia disse, vamos sair, vamos ficar no esconderijo, aquela, aquela mina ali, aquela bomba explodiu ali, faleceu a minha tia e o meu primo. Celso was given a bursary by a local NGO, Ravim, which helps his family pay for his school materials and care for him. His crutches and prosthetic leg are getting small for him, but the charity cannot afford new ones. Celso doesn't let this stop him playing football with his friends. Football is his passion. He only took it up after the accident, but now plays almost every day. E o que é que podes dizer às outras crianças que possam estar nas mesmas condições? Para que também se tornem alguém na vida? Vou dizer que não, não deixaram de estudar só para eles serem ladrões. The NGO that has helped Celso is the only one in Mozambique that is specifically dedicated to improving the living conditions of landmine victims. Luis Chouamous is co-founder of Ravim and himself a landmine survivor. Há sobreviventes de mina que se encontram em condições sociais bastante adversas. Encontramos sobreviventes de mina que não têm casas, vivem em um relente embaixo de árvores. Encontramos sobreviventes que há mais de 15, 20 anos acionaram mina 
estão com feridas, estão com amputações, nunca puderam ir ao hospital. Encontramos sobreviventes que não têm nenhum meio de, auto, de autossustento. Quando as pessoas acionam o mino, perde a sua capacidade, tem os membros reduzidos, tem a sua força totalmente reduzida. Já não tem a mesma postura para continuar a trabalhar o campo, para ganhar o seu sustento. Então essas pessoas se encontram entregue na sua própria sorte. Luís e eu traveled to the remote rural district of Tenga, north of Maputo, to meet Augusto Payani, a 72-year-old man who stepped on a landmine on the 5th of October 1984, whilst he was working on the railways. Since that date, he has not been able to access a clinic and has pieced together his own prosthetic leg out of wood, cloth and string. Por isso, mas quando eu consigo meter isso, é para não sair o frio. Tem maneira de pôr os, os meios, dobrar a coisa, para não, não, não encostar aí. Sim. Por isso, mas dá lugar para deixar aí. Hum. Na minha maneira, é aquele que está a fazer, consegue trabalhar. With no financial support from the government, Augusto continues to farm the land, planting corn and cassava to feed and house the eight members of his family. Like hundreds of other landmine victims in remote areas, he has been left to fend for himself. A assistência não pode começar e terminar na concessão de uma prótese. A prótese ou o outro meio de compensação pode dar mobilidade, permitir que a pessoa volte a andar com menos ou mais menos dificuldade, mas o o, o essencial é que temos que ver a, a a assistência na sua plenitude, haver programas de reconversão profissional, programas que devolvam uma vida com, com, com dignidade aos sobreviventes de mina. Quer dizer, no meio, uh, no, no meio da, da comunidade onde se encontra inserido, proporcionar se criar as condições para que ele possa, de uma forma independente, eh, ganhar o seu pão, o seu sustento, que é essa. É a grande luta da, da vida cotidiana. <laughs> Ravim has been able to help single mother Rosa Simangu, who lost both legs to a landmine in 1988 when she was only 18 years old. Being given a sewing machine means that despite her disability, Rosa will be able to have her own trade and provide for her children. There are hundreds of other women in Rosa's condition who are yet to receive any assistance. The total number of landmine survivors in Mozambique is unknown, and only now are efforts being made to find them. In numerous cases, we still have to give a response, and our capacity is quite infinite, because we don't receive any support from the Mozambican government. Everything we do is based on the support of some entities or international organizations, nationals, internationals, concretely. Handicap International has been working in Mozambique since 1986, when civil war left the country without infrastructure, services or governance. Today it is one of three humanitarian operators, along with the Halo Trust and Apopo, that are still involved in demining in Mozambique. In the province of Inyamban, where Handicap International is currently carrying out its operations, landmines still present a very real danger to the people. Farming the land here could prove lethal, but most people are so poor that they have no choice. It is often up to the local village elders to warn them of the threat. We didn't know because before we planted it, we almost entered and we were looking for wood. Handicap International's main focus in the post-war years has been on the physical demining efforts to relieve local people from the threat of landmines and restore land to communities. 
This year, HI received a further grant from the UN to fulfill the new deadline for the second National Mine Action Plan, which is aimed at making Mozambique landmine free by 2014. Hanok Barlevi, chief technical advisor to the Mozambican government from the UNDP, is confident that Mozambique will reach this end state. So yeah, Mozambique it's very much, hopefully will be a good uh, example of a country that suffered quite a lot uh, by landmines and other explosive devices that can reach the state where people can drive, walk freely, people can um, cultivate land without the fear of uh, entering to a minefield or kids finding a kind of an unexploded ordinance in, in, in the backyard, etc. Handicap International is aware, however, that the end of demining will not mark the end of the problem. In partnership with Javim, they have begun to carry out focus groups in remote areas in Mozambique to address the long-term repercussions of landmines, the human legacy left behind. Julio Vicente, Handicap International's health and safety advisor, was shocked to discover the conditions in which many of these landmine victims live. Eu penso que depois de a Handicap Internacional ter lutado para atacar o mal, agora é o momento de virar para encontrar a plataforma para podermos cuidar as vítimas deste mal. Então temos que trabalhar diretamente para ver se mudamos a mentalidade, tipo a nível das instituições, a nível da sociedade civil, estamos a falar aqui a nível da própria educação, da saúde, uh, dos transportes, em toda a sociedade em geral, para ver se conseguimos mudar e melhorarmos a condição do município. This is the same message that came out of the Cartagena Summit on a Mine-Free World in November 2009, where the plight of landmine victims and the lack of assistance in many of the world's mine-affected regions became the major focus. To date, Mozambique has not defined a specific strategy for landmine victim assistance. There is one rehabilitation centre in seven of the nine provinces but these are largely inaccessible to rural populations and many are not operational due to lack of resources. This reality throws into question what the government claims to be doing for disabled people in the country. Eu penso que valeu para Moçambique, para além de estarmos a responder à questão da Convenção do, do Ottawa, ou a Convenção sobre o Banimento de Minas apenas, Moçambique já é signatário também da Convenção sobre os direitos das pessoas portadoras de deficiência. Portanto, é um, é um conjunto de, de esforços que nos leva a, a crer que a questão da deficiência está a, ser, está, está a merecer a devida atenção pelo governo de Moçambique e pelas pessoas uh, envolvidas no, no, neste trabalho. After speaking to landmine victims, it is clear that information on disability rights is practically non-existent in the country. Many were abandoned by their families, some because of cultural myths that say disability is a punishment from God or a bad omen brought upon the home. Helena Numayu was 12 years old when she trod on a landmine whilst collecting firewood in 1990. In the 20 years since, she has felt people have turned their backs on her. She managed to escape an abusive marriage where her husband would keep her locked in the house. But now she is solely responsible for bringing up three children whilst feeling cut off from society. Está sem nenhuma mina e perdi duas pernas logo. E a minha mão ficou assim. E ai Deus está deficiente. Eu era uma menina com obras, brincava. Depois de estar 
não é aquele amor que eles me mostravam. Ficou assim. Assim isso. E aqui no nosso país, não sei em outros países, aqui no nosso país, a pessoa quando já é deficiente, a família, é muito difícil apanhar uma pessoa que é deficiente e a família ajuda. Não é fácil, porque a pessoa não tem apoio nem em casa, e não, não tem um, um governo que apoie aquela pessoa. Sim, já. Quando não tenho nada para dar os meus filhos para comer ou para ir na escola, me, me torna difícil. E na minha idade, nessa idade que eu tenho, eu sou deficiente, mas eu nunca pensei em sair e ir na cidade começando a pedir de mão. Mas não é fácil para mim, para eu trabalhar. Agora que não tenho cadeira de roda, está estragada, a minha vida está limitada. Os meus filhos às vezes choram, por quê? Porque eles dizem que, mamã, nós, nós somos diferentes de, de outras crianças. Às vezes vêm me perguntar, mamã, me bate na escola ou na rua, mas por que você, mamã, não sai me defender? Eu costumo dizer que epa, estão a ver a dificuldade que eu tenho. Disability in Mozambique is often shrouded in this stigma and denial. Restoring the dignity of landmine survivors is not just a question of improving the country's health service, but also changing deeply ingrained socio-cultural attitudes. One person who is working to give a voice to people affected by landmines in the country is Dan Walter. Along with his wife Deborah, he started a company in South Africa called Community Media for Development. We worked with the World Without Minds in a project that we did last year called Villa Pisa Bang. Uh, it was a radio uh, drama around uh, landmines and issues around uh, education, uh, landmine education. We were very surprised with the fact that uh, everywhere that we went, people had said that there hadn't been anybody coming to, to talk directly to, to victims. So it makes us think, you know, we've got a country that was uh, under civil war for 30 odd years, uh, one of the most landmine countries in the world, uh, and yet the people who are affected on the ground haven't had uh, their stories heard and haven't had their voices heard. Um, community Radio tries to make an attempt at, uh, at, at this, and that's, this project is, is uh, intended to feed into the Community Radio Network here in Mozambique. Radio is still the best way to reach the majority of people in Mozambique. CMFD works with well-known musicians to drive awareness of issues such as landmines in a way that people can relate to. We were fortunate enough to work with a quite well-known band, Yukuru, a Mozambican band, that uh, very good friends of mine I've played with uh, for about a uh, little over a year. Uh, and when I mentioned that I had to do a, a song around landmines uh, in the language that they uh, in the language that they speak, and they were quite excited about uh, about participating. And they wrote the song. And we recorded it live, actually, in a little club just around the corner. So it was it was really interesting. The song for the radio drama talks about people once again reclaiming their land from landmines and being able to live in peace. <laughs> if there is hope for the future that Mozambique will be landmine free, then projects such as these highlight the importance of dealing with the human legacy left behind. <laughs> Sir!